Hi, everyone. Today, let's start off by talking about the lending crisis and how lending standards are going up pretty fast. Then we'll go over the upcoming earnings season. I love these headlines, why it could break the stock market. I feel like they always put that in, but it is interesting. Then we'll go over the economic calendar for the week. There's a lot of important stuff on the calendar for this upcoming week. And then we'll do our initial take for earnings season, which starts the week after next. And then as usual, we have tons of charts to go over. And then we'll go over my results for the week and my thoughts going into the next week. If you like trading stocks and options and making money, definitely like and subscribe. I make videos like this every single day that the markets are open as well as Sundays. So make sure you hit the bell so you don't miss out on any future episodes. Welcome to the Portfolio Bulletin. Let's get started. So starting off with tighter lending standards, we've talked about this before, but I do want to keep mentioning it because I don't think we've really felt the true impact of this bigger move. From what I've read, it equates to about a 150 basis point hike from the Fed, but the banks are doing it themselves in order to protect their capital, and the Fed's not having to take any action. Then they talk about the difference between a hard landing and a no landing, and basically a no landing is rates can remain higher, but we still remain generally in positive territory for growth. But they mention here that that is pretty unlikely. In terms of things to watch from their perspective, they say the housing sector sector is slowing down as fast as they've seen it, and that completion jobs are now higher than starts, which definitely points to a bit of a slowdown. They also mentioned what we talked about earlier. Banks are tightening their lending standards at the fastest rate we've seen since COVID. And if people can't borrow money, it's harder to sustain any kind of real growth. And then for the last item here, they say the American consumer. Are we still buying? Are we seeing auto and credit card delinquencies start to rise? And they did say that we are. So they were at very, very low levels, but they are starting to rise at least a little bit. It is worth noting that because they were at lower levels, you could expect that they would return to more normalized levels. And that doesn't mean that they're going to overshoot to the upside, but it is something to watch because that is usually what it looks like, at least in the early stages. At the same token, though, they talk about how the jobs market has been remarkably resilient, adding huge numbers of jobs over the last several quarters, which of course represents the fact that the economy is still fairly strong, at least with respect to the jobs market. And to finish up this interview here from JP Morgan, they talk about what he's doing with his portfolio. And he's saying that he's long bonds and that he wants to be long bonds for about the next 15 years. This is something that I've been talking about for quite a while. I think bonds are undervalued and that I am buying bonds. And lastly, here in terms of the housing sector, they talk about the mass exodus that we saw post COVID and how supply and demand imbalances are starting to slow down at least a little bit for the first time in 2023. Next up is earnings season. They say first quarter is ending and it's time to see how the companies have been doing. They say analysts expect earnings per share to decline by 4.6% for first quarter of 2023, which would be a 3.2% year over year decline. So overall, markets are expecting lower growth as we move into earnings, which remember, that's the base case. So if it comes in any worse than that, then it'll probably go down. But if we come in a little better than that, maybe we see a continued rally. I do mention the fact that revenue is expected to continue to grow, though. So we have profit declines, but revenue growing by about 1.7%. This is generally due to inflation and the tight labor markets pushing up the cost of labor. So companies are bringing in more money, but their costs are rising faster than they can increase their profits. But moving over to Q4 of 2023, this is where it gets pretty interesting. So earnings per share growth for Q4 are expected to be 10.6%, which is pretty interesting considering that we're expecting a decline for this quarter. But in the end of the year, they're super optimistic with 10.6% growth compared to 10.8% for Q4 of 2022. So this could be the area where analysts are just too optimistic. And then as we price in that slower or negative growth, then we could see markets start to roll over as these interest rates start to impact the companies and we see the full effect of the Fed rate hiking cycle. So moving over to the economic calendar for the week, you can see Monday starts off strong with ISM manufacturing PMI, always interesting, expected to be slightly lower than the previous forecast. So we'll see how that comes out. And then we have then we have the JOLTS report here on Tuesday. Looking at Wednesday, we can see ISM non-manufacturing PMI crude in here as well. 
Looking at Thursday, we have initial jobless claims, always interesting. And then for Friday, we have non-farm payrolls, always a big number. We also have the unemployment rate, which did step up from the previous iteration. It's expected to be flat here. But if we do continue to see a little bit of a step up, that could be another initial warning sign of an upcoming recession over the next two to six months. And then looking at earnings starting with April 13th, Thursday of the week after next, we have Taiwan Semiconductor, Progressive, Delta Airlines, a couple of interesting companies. But really starting off on Friday here, you can see United Health, huge company, JP Morgan Chase, Wells Fargo, Citigroup, and then First Republic Bank. That'll definitely be an interesting one to see how they're doing. $2.6 billion company. And they've been kind of under the gun in terms of public opinion as well as their balance sheet. So we'll see how the early banks are doing on Friday of the week after next. Moving over to the chart, starting with the S&Ps here on the monthly view, you can see we got a wick through those lows, a wick through that downtrend line, and then we pushed right up to resistance. And that is where we are right now on the longer term trend line. If we do push through here, then I would be looking at the 21 EMA, which is sitting around 4206 on the monthly view. So that would be about another 100 points of upside before we hit major resistance. That would be in line with the previous month's high here for February as well. So tagging that previous month high, which would generate a double top, hit that point, and then we see a push back down to maybe 4020. That would be interesting, which would probably be right around where the nine month EMA is and the and VWAP at that point. Momentum still stepping in the bullish direction. RSI still bullish. Big volume on the month as well. Well, you can see a little bit higher volume than we've seen going all the way back to really June of 2020. So strong volume looks like we're going to go higher. Expect to retest the 21 EMA at least. And above that, then we have the shorter trend line at 42.52 and then the longer term trend line sitting at 43.43. Moving over to the weekly view, you can see that huge volume that we had on the week of 13 March. Big push up, got above all the EMAs and SMAs and VWAP here on the weekly. So looking very strong above these trend lines on the shorter time frame. Again, looking back to that same trend around 4280, which would coincide very closely with these previous wicks to the upside sitting right around that 4200 level. And then don't forget, we have this gap going back to the August high sitting around 4229, 4230. And if we get into this zone, you have to expect that we'll at least throw a wick through that gap. And then just above that, we have the August high sitting at 4323. So a couple of interesting levels here. But remember, that would be a pretty aggressive push and that we might need at least a couple of pullbacks during that period. And stepping down to the daily chart just for a moment, I want to highlight just how many gaps that we've had. We've had multiple gaps in a row. Statistically, these get filled at least at some point, and we've seen no pullbacks during this run. Daily chart resistance sitting at 4134, which is the trend that marked basically the bottom of this consolidation. But like I said, I would expect some of these gaps to get filled at some point. Doesn't mean that we have to come all the way down to 2970 right away. Certainly could see maybe a refill of these gaps, get a little bit of support down around 4017 and then get the continuation that would be interesting and give traders a little bit better entry to the long side so just keep an eye on that we're pretty extended not nearly overbought like we were going into february where we got very close to overbought conditions so certainly could go a little bit more but even during this rally which was pretty aggressive we did have a couple of pullbacks which did retest the 9 ema Big, big push, retest, touched VWAP, and then rallied, came back down, touched 90 MA, then rallied. So, so far, we've only really had one-ish pullback, and this is super aggressive here. So at some point, this is going to pull back, hopefully generate some buyers, and then we can get a stronger push to the upside. Moving over to the NASDAQ on the monthly chart, no surprise here, big bullish candle. After testing that resistance the previous month, we did take out that high here and we're looking at the 21 EMA at 13,449. Next major resistance, take that out and we're looking up at 15,000. That would be a huge push. Moving over to the weekly view, similar thesis, took out these previous highs, got very close to filling that gap going back to August. Should certainly expect that to happen at least in the next day. Throw some wicks through that level. Maybe we come up and retest the highs from August at 13,717. That would be interesting. Definitely within reach. So watch these levels back here. We're also currently testing the lows.
lows going back to March of 2022. Momentum still very strong. RSI still very strong. And all of the EMAs and SMAs are to the downside. Looking at the daily chart here just for a moment, you can see we are very close to overbought conditions. We do continue to make new highs on RSI, so the rally is still intact. We do get a little bit of a pullback here. You would expect buyers to come in. And then we get this final crescendo where we get into true overbought conditions, just like we did here in February. Then we get this kind of consolidation, that bigger pullback, a better entry, and then we can continue on the rally if it's going to continue. But remember, everything is bullish here until it starts to show us some bearishness. And really, we haven't seen anything pointing to that in the short term. Moving over to the Russell, looks quite a bit less strong. You can see we tested that lower resistance, which continues to hold 1718. We're above the 55 EMA, but not above the 9 EMA. So we're kind of trapped there. We also have this trend line sitting up at 1848, 1850 in that zone. Looking to see if we can close above those and then come up, maybe retest the 21. You can see we did get a step below the SMA here on RSI, which is generally not what you want to see. But momentum is still kind of flat and moving in the bullish direction just a little bit. Moving over to the weekly, this looks a little bit more bullish. You can see we got the decision, rally out of it, looking to push up to 1845, 1850. If we can get through those levels and the trend line, then we're looking at the 144 EMA up at 1966. And then above that, we have the major trend line at 2060. So got a step in the bullish direction. At least in the short term, the Russell looks a little bit more bullish than the monthly view. Moving over to the Dow on the monthly chart, you can see we threw that wick to the downside, got strong rejection, held above the 9 EMA on the monthly chart. We are at resistance, so that's interesting. And we already tested the 21 EMA, so we're kind of trapped between the 9-month and the 21-month EMAs. Looking to see if we can push up to the next major trend line around 340, 342. We can get above that. The next major resistance, in my opinion, would be the previous highs sitting up at 363, 364. But right now, we're kind of in this neutral pattern. You can see momentum basically flat from the previous month. RSI very close to the 50 line, sitting right on the SMA, kind of neutral right now, not given a lot of direction here on the Dow. Moving over to the weekly chart, looks a little bit more bullish. You can see how big of a push that was on the last week. Looking at the 21-day moving average, we are right at that resistance trend line that I was watching, so we'll see if we can get above there. Next trend line, 336, and then trend line above that, like we talked about, 341, 342, back at these previous wick levels. Momentum stepping in the bullish direction, RSI right at the SMA, but looks pretty bullish. And if this is a start to a rally like we saw here from the September-October lows, then we should be breaking through these levels pretty strongly and looking to that next major resistance that we talked about on the longer term charts. Moving over to the ratios here, NASDAQ divided by the SPY, you can see big push looking at the 144 EMA for resistance. We're currently at the August highs in terms of this ratio, which is interesting. We're also at the lows going back to May of 21 and testing an interesting level here from March from 22. If we're going to see a reversal, you would really expect it to happen now. You can see we're almost overbought on the weekly chart, which is a pretty big indicator here. Certainly could come up and retest that 144 EMA at 3 3.25, so a little bit more upside potential. If we can get through that, then 3.31. But like I said, I think that would be a pretty dramatic move. It's already been super aggressive, looking for that topping formation. And then we get a little bit of a pullback. That would be interesting, maybe down to 3.10. We could also mark these lows here at 3.13, going back to the low from March of 22. But right now, the NASDAQ is certainly outperforming. Looking at the SPY versus the Russell, you can see SPY outperforming as well. We are at key resistance at that 2.31 level. And then we did get a little bit of rejection from there. Maybe we see the Russell start to take over at least a little bit. RSI rolling over slightly, but not overbought yet. Momentum still bullish on both charts. So keep an eye on this, getting pretty close to some levels that are going to be important. But right now, the NASDAQ and the SPY are certainly leading to the upside. Moving over to the SPX divided by the M2 money supply, you can see we're still in this channel. If we're going to move higher, there's about 2% of upside to test that upper level of this channel, which is in line with the highs from February, just like on the other charts. Zooming out to give that level some perspective, you can see we're at the lows here from September of 2019 and the highs here from October of 2018, lows here from March of 21, and then just above the lows here from March of 22. 
So quite a bit of a different perspective, still looking to fill the gap here going back to the August move, but we're at the 200 SMA here on the weekly chart. Momentum still bullish, and you can see those EMAs still pushing in the bullish direction, so you do have to respect that. But on the historical charts, we are at some key levels, and I do expect that next major trend line to demonstrate some weakness on this chart. And moving over to the M2 money supply specifically, I just want to talk about this here for a moment. You can see the markets peaked basically at the same time as the M2 money supply. We had a little bit of a bump here in one March of 22, which did mark that shorter term top as well. And then as the M2 has continued down, so have the markets. We did have a slight push up here from one January to one March, probably because of the banking crisis. But it's worth noting that M2 had been declining basically for all of last year. And then we had a slight step up over the last two months. And it's worth noting this is on the percentage scale so that you can see these. But I do want to mention this RSI read here for M2 is definitely not what we normally see for M2. M2 is generally going up historically. And you can see how overbought we were in terms of M2. And then we're starting to come down here. And I want to highlight another time in history that this has happened. So going back here to January of 94, you can see RSI staying below the SMA here for an extended period of time. December of 93, we started moving down to January of 94, and then we stayed below it pretty consistently until basically April of 95. Started moving up in January of 95, and then crossed the SMA between March and April of 94 to 95. And look at what the markets did between that period. Basically sideways consolidation for basically that whole time. And then we hit the lows on M2 money supply. And then as we started to climb, so too did the market start to climb. So it's worth noting that if the M2 money supply continues to move down or even sideways here, we could definitely see sideways consolidation. Doesn't mean that the markets can't chop around with quite a bit of volatility. But until we see the M2 money supply really moving in the bullish direction, we shouldn't expect to see huge runs like this until we see M2 also doing that same movement. Moving over to the SPX divided by gold here on the weekly view, you can see we're in this downtrend for sure. We did get a bounce off of support and the lows going back to June. Gapped up, rallied, looking to move into this previous zone of resistance around 2293, 2294. If we do get a strong push like we did last time, come up, retest the 55 week moving average, maybe the trend line, then you would expect to continue lower. Overall, this is still a downtrend and this looks like a shorter term pullback. We do have to respect that because it can last a couple of weeks like it did here from January to February. So watch that. Maybe we see SPY outperform for the next week or two or three, and then you would expect gold to start to take back over in the medium term. Moving over to Apple and Tesla here on the weekly views, you can see Apple continues to break out looking at 167 here on the weekly chart. After that, you have 170, 90. You can see we've already filled the gap going back to August, looking to get pretty close to those August highs. If we do get to the August high, that would be 176.20, 176.12. That would be interesting. Everything looks bullish here on Apple. RSI marking higher highs here on the weekly chart. Momentum still very bullish. Looking at Tesla, similar thesis, very bullish. RSI looks bullish. Looking to retest the February highs up around 214. If we can get above that level, looking at 225.51 at these previous highs going back to October. And then just behind that, we have the 144 week and 55 week moving averages. Usually if you get that close to these averages, you're going to overthrow this trend line, hit those averages, which would be sitting around 233 or so. So watch those levels. Everything looks strong here on both of these charts. Moving over to transports here just for a moment, you can see the weekly close was very strong right into this previous zone of highest volume, sitting right at that level, retesting the 55 week moving average, looking at that nine week moving average at 229.60. And then if we can get above there, then we're looking at the 144 EMA at 235.34. And then we have the previous high just behind that at 238.65. So those are the levels I'm watching. This certainly could be an area where we get a little bit of a pullback, find some support, and then a continuation. So keep that in mind. Momentum stepping in the bullish direction. RSI sitting pretty close to that SMA, still below it. So you'd want to see that cross above if we are going to get a continuation. 
similar to what we saw here where we get very close to it and kind of move sideways for a couple of weeks. And then we get the continuation, certainly a possibility. You can even see a similarity between this candle that we had here. Big push up, looks like we're going to get a continuation, similar volume even. And then we get just a slight continuation and a pullback, consolidation, and then a move higher. So it looks like a move higher is certainly going to happen. The question is when. We don't have to necessarily get the continuation straight away. So just keep that in mind. Still look strong. Certainly pullbacks should be bought. But right now it could go either way in the short term here on transports. Moving over to semiconductors here on the weekly chart, you can see everything still looks good. Momentum still very bullish. Tagged the nine week moving average and then pushed much higher at a new high close here in recent history. Looking to the major trend line up at 268.70. Next week, it'll be sitting around 271. And then just above that, we have the 280.50 level going back to the highs from March. The March highs were much higher than the August highs here on semiconductors. If we get into that level, you would expect some pretty strong selling to happen there. It's worth noting noting that that resistance level is just behind the trend line. And if they're that close together, usually you throw a wick through the furthest trend, and then you get the rejection and then a bigger pullback. So everything looks good, still certainly could go higher. You test that resistance line, and then you would expect a little bit more of a pullback, similar to what we had here. Huge push, couple of wicks, pullback. And then that's going to be a really strong move overall here on semis. So it'll be interesting to see what happens following that key rejection that I expect to see. Moving over to stocks above their 50-day and 200-day moving averages, I just want to highlight this last push that we had right into the 144 EMA, 200 SMA, and 55 EMAs here on the 50-day average chart, all sitting at this level, and that's exactly where we stopped. Certainly seems like an area where we could get a pullback. You can see all those gaps that we've had. It's a little bit less interesting on a chart like this. But usually something is going to happen where we get some of this filled and a little bit of a pullback. You can see another area where we had a push like this, huge rally, couple of days, and then we did get a little bit of a pullback. And then we got a continuation into these overbought areas. Certainly could happen that way. Doesn't mean that the rally is over, just means that it might need a little bit of breather here. Similarly here on the 200 day average, you can see we're at the 21 and 9 EMAs on the weekly chart. Certainly could continue. Maybe we get a slight push up to this next resistance at 6121. We have the 200 SMA here at 5954. A couple of levels of resistance here. Certainly could test those just like we did here. Come in, test those levels, hang around, get a bigger pullback. So remember, everything is still bullish. And it doesn't mean that we're going to flip around right now, but we're getting into some areas that are interesting to watch here on this chart. Moving over to high yields here on the weekly, just for a moment, I want to highlight 55 EMA, which is just above where we are now at 93.43. We're also watching that 93 level going back to multiple tops here and very close to the bottom here from May of 22. So key level. We're back in this trend as well. So we could certainly come up and retest this longer term trend line at 96.58 in the medium term. Right now, looking for about a point of upside to that 55 EMA, and then we'll see what happens from there. Finishing up here with the VIX, highlighting that we're at this area of support, marking the lows going back to April of 22, previous consolidation. We did dip below it just slightly here, but continue to hold generally within this zone. And if we're going to bounce, you could certainly see a little bit of a dip lower, retest some of these lower lows around that 18, 1815 area. We've talked about that zone before. Overthrow support just a little bit, and then we get a pretty substantial breakout, similar to what we had here, here, and then got the bigger push up. Certainly a possibility, something I'm looking for here on the VIX. Right now, we're still downtrending. Have to respect that. The term is down as well. You can see we're making low highs each time. Still looks bearish. Doesn't mean we can't get a bigger push back into this 25, 25 area. Maybe marking this high going back to December right in that zone, 2579 or so. Or maybe just the 200 SMA at 2388. But like I said, right now, slight downtrend. But eventually, I would guess there's going to be at least a little bit of a breakout after this big move down that we've had. Moving over to my accounts here, you can see I'm at about 94000 I did add some money here on Friday after the close. In terms of organic gains, I ended up plus $1,359, which is a pretty good week for me, a little bit over a percent and a quarter, definitely, but I would like to see... My goal is to generally be pretty consistent in terms of the amount of money that I'm bringing into the account, in terms of credits, and hopefully lose a little bit less when the markets are going down. In terms of positions here, you can see I'm still short some puts here in the IWM, which is a bullish position. 
cues. I do have puts here for Monday. I do have some calls for Tuesday. So this is something to watch. Can certainly buy some shares and cover this position. We'll see how that ends up playing out here. Market's up a little bit after hours. So we'll see how that ends up working out. But then we have XLE, also a bullish position, covered call at the 181.50 level for a $2 credit. So we'll see how that works out. Right now, it's very positive, up over a dollar above the strike price but still a small profit on the call position as well. So see how it works out. Everything's bullish. It seems to me that's going to continue into at least midweek, into at least midweek. Let me know what you think of JP Morgan's take on the economy and is earnings going to bring down the markets in two weeks. Definitely like and subscribe if you got any value out of this video and make sure you hit the bell so you don't miss out on any of my future episodes. Of course, none of this is financial advice. This is all for entertainment purposes. Good luck in your trading and have a great day.